and welcome to In Focus. I'm Loretta Beniti. Did you know that the largest black bears in the entire world live right here in North Carolina? And while, of course, many of us think of the mountains as the place that the black bears call home, they actually live in about 60% of our state. Now, these are just some of the reasons that state lawmakers are considering changing our state mammal to the black bear. First this week, we're going to take you to the Albemarle Pamlico Sound where the highest density of black bears live in the entire world. We want to pick a spot that's as remote as possible. This road trip has been months in the making. So he has less chance of encountering a person. The last two hours of which wildlife officer Colleen Olfenbuttle, nice and cloudy, pretty cool, has spent in her state issued Ford F-150. Makes us feel better that they won't overheat. Traveling from Asheboro to an undisclosed location in eastern North Carolina. And it's always exciting to release these guys back in the wild. Return them to uh, where they came from. Give them a chance at a normal life. The guy she's referring to is a black bear cub who she picked up this morning from the North Carolina Zoo. It is now safely stowed in this trap in the back of her truck. He was orphaned earlier this spring in Eastern North Carolina, picked up and brought to one of our licensed bear rehabilitators, in this case, the North Carolina Zoo. So he spent his time with them as well as with four other bears um, this past spring and early summer. And now he is about three quarters years old. So now we're gonna release him. This is a two man job to get this cub back into the wild. My guess is he'll probably go down the road, maybe veer to the right if he's going to veer anyway. Olfenbuttle meeting up with her down. colleague. There's a canal on the right too, but it, there's some cover. To on. find the right location. All right, you ready? To let him find his footing. And when everyone is in place. Here we go. The door is released and the anxious cub is free, although curious at his new surroundings. The cub weighs about 75 pounds, but with the amount of berries and nuts found this time of year, Olfenbuttle says it won't take long for the cub to adjust to his new home. They come out and they're almost so surprised that they're back in the wild. He hit the canal and was like, oh, that traverses this water. So it took him a while to figure it out, but bears, they're smart. Again, they're readily adaptable. Um, they've had to be to be survivors over the centuries. And so it's just him exploring his surroundings. Alton Buttle is what is known as a fur bearer. As a state biologist, she specializes in black bears and says this cub is bound to run into some of his fellow black bears soon. This is about the densest population of black bears in North America. Um, it's truly unique. Bears thrive here because of all the natural foods combined with just all the hiding cover. I and mean, you see how thick it is for these bears. For these bears, it's no problem at all. Of course, for us, it's a challenge. So all that thick cover provides a lot of good hiding cover, not only from people, but from other bears and maybe other threats they might face in their day-to-day -day activities. Today's cub was released with a GPS collar. One way that researchers learn new things about the bears and their habits and try to figure out just how many bears we have here in North Carolina. <laughs> the million dollar question. That's the million dollar question. Yeah. We know in Eastern North Carolina, we estimate we have about 11 to 12,000 bears. And not only are there a lot of bears in the eastern part of the state, but well, you can see here, they're really big. We headed out to the Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge, just west of Manio, to get a look for ourselves. It didn't take long to find what we were looking for. This land is their home. You're the visitor. And because of that, these wild animals are very comfortable just going about their day as you look on, from a safe distance, of course. A lot of people don't know that we have as many bears on the coast as we do. So it's, it's always a, a special place for people to visit and come. The refuge is a safe space for black bears, but wildlife officials point out bears consider most of the land in the coastal plains to be a safe zone. Bears are really good at traveling and finding the best food sources uh, that give them the, the most calories and the most energy. So bears don't have to walk far in some places 
to uh, utilize agricultural crops as one of their food sources. And you can see they migrate towards the cornfields on the refuge. But Turner says it's not just the planted crops that attract them and fatten them up. They always try to pick the easiest and the, the most uh, nutritious, you know, high energy foods so that they can uh, have enough energy to travel like they do, but at the same time have enough left that they're, they're building fat stores for the winter. So fall fruits uh, like pokeberry, uh, beautyberry, elderberry, and devil's walking stick. These are very abundant. They are really uh, critical foods across the board when it comes to providing what, what bears need. And with bears getting as big as a whopping 700 pounds along the coastal plains, Turner says they do have a way to track what the bears are eating that make them this big. By looking at droppings, scats, we, we can actually get a really good idea of the seasonal foods that they utilize. Being beside a cornfield, what you're seeing here is uh, vegetation along with certainly uh, corn as, as, a, as a big part of what, what this bear has been eating. He's also on the lookout for problematic scats when the bears in human interaction is just too close. Bear issues that might arise in residential type areas, a lot of times it's concerning trash cans and table scraps and things that people might throw out you know, that we haven't eaten. Not all bears are willing to do this, but certainly you may find an individual bear that uh, finds that food source and he can get more calories in one hour than they possibly could get in foraging all day in, in the uh, you know, eating native uh, wild foods. This is not very old here. And so when he walked right through there and some of this, he's tore all this down in here. So. And one place where a lot of that interaction could happen is in farming communities. He's just shut that corn out. Talk about an easy place for bears to find those calories before hibernation. Sometimes they come right back in the middle of the day, walk across here and get them another snack and turn around and go back, you know. At Armstrong Farms in Hyde County, Sounds like need to get both from growing corn is a way of life. Yeah, I showed it to Wil Wilbur a while ago. So is losing some of that corn every year to their furry neighbors. We actually try to plant this down in here to, to hold them here and let them eat this and keep them out of the main field. This, this farmland down here don't quite produce as much, but it produces enough to feed a bear. So I'd rather for him to eat in 100 bushel corn than I'd had to eat in 200 bushel or 300 bushel corn on the other end. So you actually sacrifice this little bit down here to let him stay out of the good stuff. The morning we caught up with Armstrong, he drove us around. The cubs will eat, then they'll, she'll get up and move. She'll move down the field a little bit lower. Sure, that we would see a bear on his acres of crops. We did, but he was too fast for us to catch on camera. The bear looked pretty fat too, didn't he? You see, he was rolling when he went across the road. But Armstrong was able to show us the kind of damage. There's a fresh place right on the other side of the ditch. Just one bear can do to his farm. He sat down on his butt and he just, he grabs it, he grabs him armful and pulls it to him. Then he reach over there and you see how it's all in a pile? With still grain left there, but he don't eat all of it. It wasn't all that long ago. It was hard to find a bear in North Carolina. The numbers were dwindling, forcing state wildlife officials to step into action, adding regulations, closing hunting seasons, and creating bear sanctuaries. Today, the numbers are fully replenished, and that is why bear hunting is back in our state and now used as a way to help regulate the population. Bear hunting season is very limited by county in the eastern part of the state, as is the number of bears you can kill. And while wildlife officials say even though farmers have the right to protect their property with lethal force through things like hunting, it's not often that that's the first step taken. Even though that is a, uh, a tool in the toolbox, uh, it is, is actually used very little in most cases because I think uh, what you generally see is that the value of bears uh, as a resource certainly helps offset any losses that we see. Some hunting guide companies charge as much as $10,000 on one of these so-called trophy bear hunts in our coastal plains, and then an additional $50 a pound for any bear weighing over 400 pounds. But there is even more financial gain for the communities where these hunts are taking place. You get a lot of people come in during hunting season, 
uh, going out to eat at all the little restaurants we have down here and the gas stations and little bars and everything in the world. So it brings a lot of money to the county for them uh, what's a month. It's two weeks in November and two weeks in December. So Saturday before the, the bear season comes in, it's just truck after truck after truck after truck is coming in from all over. And Armstrong says in the end, the damage from the bears feeding on his land is at least for him inconsequential. When you got 5,000 acres of corn, it's, 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 it's just kind of a small drop in the bucket. So many of the black bears that live here in North Carolina are moving into our big cities. Well, this can be a problem. Coming up, we take a look at how these cities are trying to deal with this black bear population. Mm -hmm.